So hi, I'm Ash, uh, and today I'll be discussing the barriers of going green. So urbanisation has resulted in many negative impacts and green walls are gaining in popularity globally. As they not only address these concerns, but they are spatially efficient and provide a range of additional benefits. While green walls have been implemented across the world, as we can see in Europe and Singapore and America, research has shown that less than 1% of Australia's major city centres are vertically greened. So clearly there are barriers and obstacles preventing green wall uptake in Australia. In order to overcome these barriers, a greater uh, understanding is required. Thus, this study decided to investigate the general public's understanding of green walls, their willingness to pay, and their barriers to implementation. This was achieved by distributing a nationwide survey to relevant local governments and voluntary councils. 161 individuals submitted responses and the distribution of those respondents closely reflected the population density of the country. To ensure participants were not influenced by the survey, no additional information was provided about green walls or green infrastructure in general. Incomplete surveys were removed from the analysis and survey responses were grouped by demographic characteristics. Pearson's Kite Square tests for independence with Monte Carlo simulations were used to examine the differences across the five demographic groups for each survey question. While most participants had heard of green walls prior to the survey, only about one third had a moderate awareness with females having a greater level of awareness than males. Although most did not live or work near a green wall, many reported to at least like one feature of green walls. Though this varied with residential remoteness as more individuals living in urban areas tended to like green wall features more so than those living in non-urban areas. This could be driven by the lack of nature in the urban environment, resulting in green space and green infrastructure being viewed more favorably. However, probably the most important finding of this study was that 81% of respondents believe that having a green wall at your place of residence would improve their quality of life. This alone highlights the impact of greenery on the emotional, physical and mental well-being of individuals and is also clearly acknowledged as actually one of our previous champions that we just got to listen to said health is wealth. Participants were asked to rank green, uh, green wall benefits on a scale from low to high importance. The benefits deemed to be the most important centered around air quality, beauty, and the urban heat island effect. Females tended to identify beauty as a more important benefit of green walls, while um, low to median income earners considered increased biodiversity as important. Green walls clearly had an impact on the emotional and mental well-being of participants, as 95% reported feeling different in the presence of green walls, with the most frequently identified response feeling was feeling more at peace. A greater proportion of females reported a stronger sense of community pride, which could be driven by the fact that females also perceived beauty and aesthetics as an important benefit. The outcome of young participants feeling more at peace in the presence of green walls could be driven by the impact of eco-anxiety, as younger generations have a greater concern for the environment and the environmental impacts of our current actions. Residents from non-urban areas reported feeling a stronger sense of community belonging. This could be in response to the isolation felt by individuals living in those areas. Willingness to pay was also investigated, with the majority of individuals reporting that they'd be willing to pay for a green wall construction. Interestingly, the only demographic to influence this was income, though the outcomes were not as expected. High income earners were most likely willing to invest $600 or more, followed closely by median and low income earners though the highest earners were actually the least likely to invest in this bracket. Interestingly, this contradicts the widespread notion of willingness to pay, which could actually indicate 
income and financial capacities may not be the primary driver of green wall investments. Despite the majority of individuals wanting to be green, there was a clear barrier, barrier of uncertainty. As the majority of respondents stated that information was actually their most desired form of assistance, with particular preference for resources such as advice, guidance, workshop, technical support and consultations. The secondary form of assistance that was desired was fiscal, identifying that financial barriers actually weren't the primary obstacle to Greenwall implementation. When queried on what was considered to be an important consideration prior to construction, responses varied substantially across all demographics except education. The most frequently identified consideration for Greenwall development related to operation, structural soundness, weather resistance and maintenance. Gender was significantly influential on the considerations of green wall development, with females having the greatest number of considerations prior to construction than any other demographic. This could be driven by the fact that females are generally more environmentally conscientious than males and tend to commit and maintain to environmentally friendly habits more so than their male counterparts. Thus, when they undertake new environmental practices, they tend to evaluate and consider the implications of going green to a greater degree. While the consensus among the Australian community was found to be positive with respect to green walls, there was a clear demand for greater educational, technical and fiscal support to provide necessary resources for green wall development. These demands are often seen as barriers but when they're overcome, there's a marked increase in green wall implementation. This can be seen across Europe and America and Singapore, but also slowly in Australia. In 2017, Erga et al demonstrated the impact of education and informational support, as the Australian local government areas that provided this kind of support tended to have a greater number of green wall and green roof installations. This current study has identified which demographic groups are more likely to be receptive to green initiatives. And this information could be of value to governments and other organizations alike when developing their educational materials. But ultimately, if these barriers were addressed and the assistance was provided, then we'd be on the right path to becoming a vertically green Australia. Thank you.